Business trade secrets are something that is very critical. Every business has a core that is driving them, which is why um, the formula for Coca-Cola just is a handful of people know it, and which is why most com most every the taste is the same all over, but it's just the concentrate that is sent to everybody. Even if you are executive, everybody, um, what is it called? Warren Buffett call it, calls it your moat. Moat means that in, in the ancient times, when you build a castle, to protect the castle, you build a very big um, well around it. Then you now use um, something like potty, wet mud, mm -hmm. and fill it up. Then you, can now, you now have a bridge from the castle across so in time in time of battle if somebody wants to attack you the person has to cross that moat and once they get there that moat will swallow them your moat is your business secret what is that thing that you know about the business that anytime you deploy it gives you the result for us i share a lot of things that we do but i know what is fundamentally the main reason that is giving us our result so a lot of people might just think, okay, he knows how to talk, he knows how to, he's not, that's not it. So it's for you to identify what is your business mode and ensure that you actually protect it yourself. I think the other area that I was seeing for you, you need to work on um, is discipline, especially over your staff. It's if your staff are actually decide the, uh, dictating um, some of the, this thing, then I think you might actually not have enough control over your business. And some of the time, I always say, when you want to regain, regain control, the best way to do that is look for somebody who everybody feels that the, the, this person is untouchable and make a public display of punishing the person openly. And everybody will know that things have changed. If you have, you are suffering from indiscipline or people taking you for granted in your business, mm -hmm. the way to change that is if when it happens, there's usually one prominent person that is leading the path that everybody's learning from. Mm -hmm. What you need to put back discipline is bring out that person and publicly reprimand and discipline that person to such an extent that the person feels downgraded, every other person will learn the lesson. And I've noticed that in all the companies I've worked with, is a constant in all of them. There's always one person who is leading the indiscipline. And some, most of them, because of the relationship with the person, the business owner find it difficult to get rid of them. And in 80% of the cases, what I've always done was to take out the power of the person. Most, most likely, like um, there was a person who was a manager. What I did was I took out the management, manager position from him and gave it to a younger person. Now, what people say that if they could do it to this person, my own might be sacked. And the indiscipline in that company disappeared. Because what you tolerate with time becomes a habit. And what becomes a habit becomes the culture of your organization. Culture is simply a group habit practiced by a set of people. And when you tolerate bad habit, it becomes a culture in your place. Um, control, financial discipline, which um, I think is an area that each and is common with everybody. And why it happens most time with most of us is because of not having clear goals. Do you think that you'll be financially, let's say you, your, your child's school fees is next week, you need to pay it. Do you think that buying the clothes will be very, very urgent for you? Once you have goals, those things that used to be priorities suddenly will change for you. But once you don't have any goals that you are channeling your finances to, Pascal's law comes into play. You see a clothes, Kai, I need to buy this clothes. And once you buy it, by next week, you will remember that you bought it. 
you will remember that ah, I had 100,000 last week. What happened? Um, so, who else have not talked about the lesson? 